Let's go back again to our text. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26. We began to discuss it yesterday. He said, my son, the first requirement to host my glory, to host my power, is give me your heart. Not your offering, not your preaching, not your singing. Give me your heart. I told you that what gives credence to your entire activity in this kingdom is the state of your heart. Not just the motions of the things that we do. The kneeling down, the rolling on the floor, the jumping up, the crying. All of those things only find their value when your heart is sincere, broken, contrite. My son, give me your heart. Because whatever possesses your heart is your God. Whether or not you believe it, that which can find its way into that inner chamber called your heart has become your God. And then the second instruction that will be our teaching for tonight. So step one, give me your heart. Step two, let your eyes observe my ways. You want to host superior dimensions of the glory of God. You want to bring territories under the influence of the Lordship of the Christ. It says there is a dimension of your comprehension of my ways. God is a God of patterns. Please everyone say a God of patterns. In the wilderness, when they began to build the tabernacle, the Bible records that every once and again, God would come to Moses and beckon on Moses that the house be built according to pattern. So God took Moses in a vision while he was up the mountain. He had an idea and he saw the heavenly tabernacle and he was instructed to reproduce that pattern. Please listen. And God kept coming to Moses to say, ensure that the house is built according to pattern. And when you read, the glory of God never showed up until the last peg was hit according to pattern. Then the Bible says, then the glory of the Lord came and tabernacled in that place. And the priest could not even enter and minister. So God is a God of patterns. And the way he operates is that he never does the same thing twice. Please look up. In the dealings of God with men, the first thing he does is the example that man follows. Are we together now? So every manifestation of his grace that is demonstrated in the earth realm, in doing it, he reveals the pattern for the continuity of that process. For instance... He's never had to create a man and a woman again. In as much as we know when Adam was created and Eve was created, a pattern, are we together now? So that when you want more men, you subscribe to the pattern that makes for reproduction. And if you get the pattern right, then a child will come. Are we together the Bible says God came and planted trees himself in Eden. He's not had to come to plant any tree again because a pattern was created that when the tree grows, in it is the seed for its continuity. So if you want to see more trees, you subscribe to the pattern that makes for multiplication of the trees. You will sow the tree to the earth. You don't throw a seed in the sky and it grows. That seed must make contact with the earth. Because the pattern requires earth. Are, are we together now? Yes. If you want to grow biologically, there is a pattern for growth. Exercise well and eat. And automatically you will grow. It is a pattern. If you want to grow intellectually, there is a pattern. Expose yourself to a body of knowledge and continue to give yourself religiously to it. 
and then you will find out that intellectually you are growing are we together there is a pattern that regulates agriculture on earth and especially within our nation here there is the rainy season and there is the dry season nobody has had to pray that god will change it there has not been any reason for it so rather than fighting to make rainy season dry season and dry season rainy season you plan your productivity along that pattern are we together if you must farm in dry season you will pay the price for farming at the time when rain is not coming by outsourcing an irrigation system to cover what would have come naturally because you are violating a pattern so you must create another wisdom strategy to find water are we together now but during rainy season you do not necessarily need irrigation because the season was designed to help you we have a very long journey this night so please in the name of jesus don't be tired are we together that god is a god of patterns his patterns make We clash cymbals, we play keyboard, we shout, we yell, and it doesn't seem to come. But the Bible talks about a man in the Bible called Job. That Job, at the height of his predicament, when he failed to find an explanation, his friends, Elihu inclusive, they came and attempted to bring an explanation as to why a man who felt he was righteous would be plagued by such predicaments. When men could not answer him, the Bible says that Job summoned God and God came. Now, what did Job say and what did Job do? Because God honored him. In fact, when Cain killed Abel, the Bible says God came to Cain. Cain was not praying for an encounter. God came and met Cain and Cain, if God spoke to you, will you answer him back that way? You will kneel down and say, your majesty, you even came to me. But Cain said, am I my brother's keeper? There was a pattern that ensured that the voice of God was not scarce. That even in his rebellion, that pattern was still honored. Please follow me tonight. May God open our eyes in the name of Jesus. The nation of Israel were given a spiritual pattern that every time their enemies overwhelmed them and it was clear that by the arm of flesh they would not prevail they were taught a chant the moment they begin to chant it the war will change must change the moment kings came together to fight the nation of israel if he was within their power they would fight and defeat them but where defeat was imminent they would stress back and begin to lift up that chant you are good and your mercy it was not a song it was a spiritual code when god hears that code from the earth it calls a dimension of him please sit down please sit down and understand what i'm saying so their enemies found out that whether they were few or many there was something they could do from the earth that would create a response from heaven do you know there is something a man can say on earth and you will die immediately listen listen please there are many people who have died today because of violating that pattern because they do not know may God deliver this generation from ignorance in the name of Jesus Christ did the wife of Job not look at him and say curse God and die so there is a kind of curse you bring towards God that you die immediately. How many times have you insulted God and yet you did not die? That means he was not just saying you are stupid or you are not God. There is something a man can utter. If that thing actually gets to the realm of the spirit, the consequence is that your life will leave you. Hey. 
So the Bible is a compendium of spiritual patterns that lead to several outcomes in a believer's life. Please listen to this. Many of the people who walked with God in walking with God stumbled across certain patterns and they archived those patterns and transferred it to a generation to say in learning God add this to your knowledge that this is the spiritual pattern that leads to this outcome. So when it gets to us now we have the privilege of studying not just scriptures but studying spiritual patterns that lead to certain outcomes. There were certain things men did on earth and it brought judgment to them. There were certain things men did on earth and it brought the mercy of God to them. There were certain things God did on, men did on earth and overnight their lives changed. There were certain things men did on earth and it added 40 years of captivity. The goal is that in studying this, we will now understand what the Bible calls the ways of God. Everybody say the ways of God. The ways of God represent the methodologies of the kingdom. That God does not just operate haphazardly. Believers, listen to me. Please look up. There are two indices that measure spiritual growth and maturity. Two biblical indices measure growth and maturity. Number one, the first biblical index for measuring spiritual growth is your degree of conformity to the character of the Christ in experience. That is the first biblical index. So you say a man is growing spiritually not because of how long he has been in church. Not because of how long he has served in church. Uh -uh. Spiritual growth is measured number one by the degree of your conformity to the image and the character of the Christ in experience. My little children, Paul says, in whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. He was talking to believers who are already born again. Are we together? If you're together, say amen. amen. Number two, the second biblical index for measuring maturity is your depth of comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom. The degree to which you have been exposed to the secrets of the kingdom, the mysteries of the kingdom, these are the principles that translate into what we call dominion. Dominion is not an impartation. There is no grace in the Bible for dominion. Dominion, I would always say, is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom. When you comprehend the mysteries of the kingdom, it will translate into authority. And then you will be able to command dimensions of results that are not given to men. Is God speaking to us? So two people can be born again. Watch this. Born again the same day. But then the degree to which they are exposed to the accurate understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom will determine the quality of their spiritual experience. So one person who may have the privilege to be mentored by a man of God who exposes him sufficiently to the ways of God, the principles of the kingdom, that gentleman will command greater authority in the spirit on the strength of the truth that he now possesses. So conferences like this, among other things, is a feast of light where God now exposes us to deeper and higher dimensions of spiritual reality so that holding them now as substance in the spirit, you will be able to do exploits even for the kingdom. So revival is not just something we continue to wish. No. There are dimensions. There is an education that must happen upon you. Jesus, Jesus mentored 12 people, 72 different groups of people over a period of, period of God upon their lives. Listen to this. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is not in ignorance. I do not believe in time. I do not believe that believers are in ignorance. But this is what I think the problem is. 
that the spiritual truths that we communicate they are not sequentially arranged they are randomly arranged so we do not know what kingdom mystery is responsible for what outcome for instance when a believer is in trouble it is usual to engage anything blood of jesus holy ghost fire the name of jesus we touch and agree we sow a seed we just hope that and one of them will produce the result but there is no mastery because you do not know what spiritual agency is responsible for what outcome are we together now so the moment you are in trouble you hear a sound in your zinc the next thing you try to pray then you add fasting then you call the blood of jesus then you take communion do you not know that all of those mysteries have exact results that they produce it is dangerous to get results without knowing what you did because you will fear your own result the ability to reproduce it is not there so paul says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully is god helping us so ask the average believer how do i get to know god and hear his answer this is a revival series ask an average believer who has been in church for three five years and say i just gave my life to christ what is step two what do i do here's what the average believer will tell you come to church every day and that's correct uh, read your bible he will say and then for those who are a bit into spiritual things say try fasting make sure you are filled with the holy ghost and that's it what a poor understanding of the ways of god this is the reason why there is a widespread weakness within the body the body is supposed to be an invincible army of powerful people if mentored by a predefined methodology you watch people those who got born again in acts chapter one by the time you get to Acts chapter four some of these people were powerful do we have the intelligence that turns weak men to men of fire and power or are we hoping that in a group randomly one will just rise by his personal sacrifice most people who are on fire were not on fire because they were corporately mentored they just decided on their own to press into god and we will not be effective that way there has to be a corporate system all medical students pass through a system that has been predefined and when a student comes six years ago he was a naive student in the university six years later you call him doctor because there was a methodical approach to medicine this lecture is exactly why the book of first and second corinthians came because paul observed in his apostolic voyage strengthening the church he found out that the church in corinth has such an outpouring of the spirit people were prophesying people were taking communion some were Prophesy. they didn't know the name of what they were having was word of knowledge it was paul that named it so paul brought order to the growth of the church today now you can create a bible study manual out of that mentorship and teach an average believer that okay there are gifts of the spirit so if i'm prophesying now i'm edified because i know what i'm doing but I hope you know that the gifts that were written in the Bible were not all that there is. So who else puts to sequence the remaining that are coming? Because in this end time, you will see dimensions of things that will look like error. It is not error. It is just another pattern. It will require dimensions of spiritual intelligence. Sit down, please. Is God speaking to us? So the Bible says, My son, give me your heart. Then let your eyes observe. 
He didn't say no, observe first. The dynamism of that way is something that if you don't observe, you can miss it. Let your eyes observe. The average believer's understanding of prayer, the, I think the most, the most um, I would say the most respected subject to the average believer is prayer. Now ask a random believer from any church, it doesn't matter what, and ask him, what do you understand by prayer? And you will hear answers like this. I hope you know I'm not being sarcastic. This is, this is a convention for the body of Christ. Someone will tell you it is an instrument for deliverance. He is right. Another person will tell you it is a principle that helps me to release my faith, to get my needs met. He is right. Another will tell you, well, it is something that if I want anointing in my life and I don't want to be small, I saw my pastor praying every time. So it's now gingered me to obey. The, the gaps in our understanding is the reason why our growth is not sequential. So we do a lot of things. It is also the reason why there is weariness in the body. Because when you are doing things not by understanding, you are just copying because someone you respect was doing it. A time will come you will not have the stamina for continuity. Pattern. If you meet a doctor right now, let me have one gentleman here, please. Come. Please stand here. Now, stand, stand. Don't worry, it's not impartation. <laughs> Watch. You know, every time I call people like this, they are always thinking anointing, anointing. This is our generation likes power. Now, watch this. Watch this. Look at this gentleman. Do you know if I am a doctor, let's say I'm a consultant, as this guy sits in my office, and he's busy giving the story. Oh, doctor, I have headache. And then yesterday, I began to feel weak. I say, doctor, I'm not concerned about what he's saying. I'm looking for patterns in what he's saying. It is that I have been trained to observe those patterns. And my diagnosis will be based on those patterns. So whether he's speaking broken English or he's speaking whatever, I am looking for the traces. Okay, headache, weakness in the body. And my mind is going to my notebook this most likely will be typhoid and my recommendation will be based on that and because i have done it for many years i have gained mastery i can give him a guarantee take this and return back home can we do that for spiritual things can someone come to you now and say